Hi, I'm Eric. I'm Trace. And this is E3 Live! Yay. Yay! Uh, we thought we would do a little uh, commercial or a little video for you guys just to kind of talk about the CD for a few minutes and kind of uh, talk about it from our point of view. So uh, we're really glad it's out and it seems to be a, a really cool thing that people are really enjoying. But um, we thought we'd talk about it a little more. So Trace. Yes. Why make a CD? Why make a CD? Uh, Why make a CD? Well, I guess there are several reasons we make a CD. Uh, I guess number one is uh, the sake of, uh, I guess, chronicling where we are as a community at this point. Like, a lot of these songs are kind of what Stern and Eric and I and what we see Stern in the community. So that would be number one, to just kind of document what's going on. And number two is to kind of share it with... Uh, uh, people that may or may not go to E3 or it's their first time at E3 and they're like what the heck are these songs these people are doing and so since these are the songs kind of stirring at us they're gonna be popping up every now and then so if you're kind of familiar with the song then it's easier to get into the worship and just go with it yeah So, okay cool so we're documenting we're documenting sort of you know the worshiping musical life of our community what made you pick or what drew you to the certain songs like that you played on the record? Uh, a lot of them just had to do with the fact that there are certain songs that I've been using and leading into the community and I've seen certain songs resonate with people in the community and it just seemed like a good fit and then there's a couple of them that just in my life at the time were really big like You Are God was definitely a song that was I had done it a couple times here and things like that, but in terms of a song that I just felt really had some passion and resonation behind it, I, I was like, this song has to be on the record. Yeah. What about you? What, 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 what was your process to get it? Yeah, I mean, it was, a, it was very, very similar. I mean, we stand up here each week and we kind of get to look and see visually like certain songs that just kind of the community just seems to grab onto for one reason or another. and. Um, so those are songs that kind of become shoe-ins because you just realize that people usually want to take that experience with them during the week. And then there's others that just selfishly I feel very drawn to and would just like to document. Or, or for the same reason, like um, I, I just kind of get this feeling that this song would be special for people to have uh, yeah. in their life. So that's cool. Yeah. Um, so... Let's tell people about the process because it was a very interesting process, a little bit unlike it, most CDs. That it was uh, kind of like a nightmare, really. It was kind of like a nightmare. A very, it was a good nightmare, though. Like, is there, well, is, is there, there such a thing? I don't okay, know. maybe it was a bad dream turned out good. Right. Well, all right. Let me start. So, like every year, you know, E3 kind of budgeted budgets for a CD. So the fact that we were going to do a CD was planned, um, but the but the project changed directions a couple times. Like it really started all the way back in like March, March or April. Yeah, because you would come to me saying, "Hey, we're gonna do some original songs for a record." And but no, we were gonna write. Like I had started writing songs, and Evan had started writing songs yes. even. And then all of a sudden, it alas, was, uh, it changed. It was gone. Yeah, we first started out, and we wanted it to be a project that was sort of original music, not really a, a corporate thing. And then. Um, <laughs> Uh, Mark and I had some conversations, that would be Pastor Mark, uh, he and I had some conversations and uh, he really felt like it might be a good idea to look at making a document of our worshiping, like thinking thing that uh, something that people could take the E3 musical experience into the week. So we changed direction, said stop writing, don't worry about it, uh, and so that was about May. And so about May, we started thinking, hey, we're going to do a live CD. Then what? Uh, then it became, hey, we're going to record like five Sunday gatherings. And yep. Trace, you're going to lead two of these gatherings. I'm going to lead the other, you're going to lead the other yes. three. And then uh, it turns out the guy, Ryan Earnhardt, this, that did not really coincide with his schedule that well. It was yeah. a little impossible. Yeah, that was, that, that was uh, asking a lot. And plus, um, when you do something like this, we have to rent gear and borrow gear and so it was really uh, impossible to actually find the gear so then it became we're gonna do you know like two nights three nights three nights but we didn't know when because we had to borrow a piece of gear so then then it became hey this is the weekend that the we needed an extra snake to route to yes. I won't go into process of what a snake is but you trust me it's very important 
Uh, so the weekend the snake came available was probably the absolute worst week yeah. possible. Yeah. Uh, Eric had just gotten, he was about to go out of town or mm -hmm. had just gotten back into town yeah. and he had led worship at the Love at Work camp the entire week, yep. including the night that I led for the record, so he wasn't even yep. here for night one. Not to mention, it was only like eight days. Like it, I think when we oh. when we committed to it, it was like, oh hey, we're gonna do this in eight days from yeah. now. So basically, uh, the bands we had about a week mm -hmm. to come up with all of our arrangements and stuff, yep. and uh, uh, it was a very interesting process. Randy and I, uh, Randy Van Winger, and played in uh, with me, and me and him sat down and went through our eight song set list and said, all right, let's arrange this stuff. Yep. And, we did some different arrangements on a couple of songs that unfortunately were a little too uh, spotty to make the record. I guess that's a good word, <laughs> spotty. Good word? Yeah, spotty. 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 Um, so, we, so basically, uh, you got a band together, you rehearsed them, I had a band together. Um, two we, bands. Two bands together. And so the plan was that we would record a Friday night event with Trace leading, a Saturday night event with me leading, and then Sunday nights worship gathering so there would be kind of a, a large uh, variety of people involved in this project which is a very important value of mine yeah. that worship should reflect as many different people from the community as possible oh, yeah um, uh, so trace recorded Friday night I recorded Saturday night and we got everything in sort of what well, in the business we call in the can in the can um, and it used then to be on tape yeah, but tape doesn't exist. Tape doesn't exist anymore. And then from there, we moved everything over to Pixel Records, and we started mixing everything, picking cuts. I mean, I think I got, I think I was given six CDs of material to to listen through. That was a that was a phase that you weren't subject to. Yeah, and let me tell Luckily. you something, folks. Uh, <laughs> when we say the, the it was rough mixes, we're talking rough mixes. So, yes, I mean the the sound is not tweaked. It's very the levels aren't tweaked, so everything comes across in yeah. just kind of this streamlined, monotone yeah. way. And also, we had asked Ryan to record everything, to record oh. rehearsals, to record, just so we could have as much source material as possible. So I get like six to seven CDs worth of material, and then I kind of went through and picked the first cut of tunes that said, like, these are the ones that we're going to invest our time in, these are the ones that we feel like we can bring to a a completion status in a timely manner yep because yeah. there was one that i was really upset didn't make the record but the time to get it accomplished was just yeah. not there it would have required the entire band going back in the studio to yeah. fix stuff and we just didn't have that kind of time yeah so so we take it to pixel uh, ryan starts working his magic and uh and then in the course of that we fix a few things i would say probably 80 percent of the record is is exactly live which is pretty rare um, but there were some fixes and a couple things added here and there just to kind of make it um, make it just bring it to bring up the excellence level oh, I guess, absolutely because like. vocals are never perfect right. like in a live setting your vocals are never I mean it's how often would you say you've ever hit a song perfect vocally 100% Oh, I don't know, maybe, no. Oh, <laughs> no, it's hard, it's hard, it's hard. Um, 